Anguna Scourge the Goblin King is a new game for the NES that will be released in the coming months. The game is a top-down action-adventure title inspired by The Legend of Zelda. And if the name Anguna seems familiar to you, it's because Anguna Scourge of the Goblin King is actually a sequel to the Game Boy Advance homebrew game Anguna Warriors of Virtue, which was released in 2003 and I never played it. Anyway, Anguna Scourge of the Goblin King would then receive a Kickstarter campaign in May of 2021. Well, actually, although the game is completed, the most recent Kickstarter update does mention that it suffers from a few bugs that they are now correcting and that they are also trying to get physical copies produced. And in fact, this is why I do not own a physical copy of this game. As of the making of this video, there aren't any, so instead, I'll be capturing my footage from a ROM the developer sent me. In fact, one thing I need to point out is that this ROM is not compatible with my usual NES emulator, Nestopia. And instead, I had to go download the Messen emulator. I mean, it's not a big deal or anything, but just know that if the ROM ever goes for sale in the future, you might not be able to run it on your usual emulator. Anyway, booting up the game, you're quickly brought to a title screen where you can start a new game or continue your previous save and hey, look at that! My name is in the ROM they sent me, that's pretty cool! Once you start a new game, you're told that you were sent out to kill the Goblin King. But apparently, you reminded him of the babe, so he captured you instead. And now, you have to get out, defeat his minions and show him he has no power over you. Anyway, at first glance, Anguna looks like a Legend of Zelda clone. And while yes, that's clearly where the main source of inspiration stems from, it actually reminds me more of Golvelius for the Sega Master System than it does The Legend of Zelda. Not because it shares Golvelius' multitude of gameplay elements, it doesn't. But because it's more combat focused than puzzle focused. Although I will say, I thought the combat in Anguna was much more satisfying. In fact, much like Alvelius and the original Legend of Zelda, there aren't any towns or cities to visit. This game, like the aforementioned titles, is all about survival. If you're hurt, you're going to have to farm enemies for health pickups, and it's usually a good idea to know when and where to run. Of course, the easiest way of healing yourself is by leveling up. Yes, that's right! This game has a level up system. As you dispatch enemies, you'll build up XP and level up your character. Though as far as I can tell, leveling up only adds more HP to your character, it does not actually increase your attack or defense. That is reserved to sword and shield upgrades which you can find scattered across the land. With that said though, you can only gain XP up to level 11, at which point your health bar will reach its maximum. So in a weird way, at times it might actually be a good idea to hold off on grinding and save that full heal you get by leveling up for the next dungeon. One thing that I really liked about this game is that you can actually run away from most boss fights. For example, at first I had a ton of difficulty fighting this wasp boss and leveling up didn't really help much at all. But once I took my time to explore the world and dungeons, searching for shield and sword upgrades, it eventually became much easier. Now, like in all good Legend of Zelda clones, you'll also be picking up a few items that will help you along your way. The first one is a bow which you pick up in your first dungeon, and it will cause the same damage as your sword. This is mostly employed to take out enemies at a distance, as I did not run across any puzzles that would require me to carry the bow. But it was very useful against the aforementioned wasp boss and is pretty much a requirement against one of the later bosses. You also pick up the bomb which can be used to damage enemies, but it's mostly applied to destroy rocks and open up new paths to explore. You also pick up a candle which can light your way in dark areas, as well as the wing boots which will let you walk over gaps and water. The potion heals you and the ring will increase your attack power. You'll also find keys which are used to open doors and these have 6 different color codes. The interesting thing here is that once you pick up a key, it will stay with you forever. 
you will not lose it no matter how many doors you open. And that's pretty much it for your inventory. Yeah, it may not seem like a large inventory by the standard we've seen in Zelda games or Zelda clones. And the reason for that is that this game is actually super short. I finished Danguna, Scourge the Goblin King, on my first playthrough in just under 2 hours. Now granted, I died a few times here and there, especially against the wasp boss and the Goblin King himself. But with a little perseverance, you can actually clear this game pretty quickly. In fact, whether you're on a dungeon or outside, you always have a map with you that tells you at all times where you are and where you've been to. And it also gives you a pretty good idea of how small the world of Anguna is when compared to other similar games. And the game isn't even that difficult. I mean, sure, some bosses gave me some trouble, but most were rather easy. In fact, one of the last bosses you fight in the game was actually the easiest one of them all. So the challenge is a bit inconsistent, and in fact, once I figured out the Goblin King's pattern, he actually became a cakewalk. Whereas the giant enemy crab boss kept dealing massive damage. So here's this giant enemy crab. That's not my joke by the way, he's literally called Giant Enemy Crab, and his description is causes massive damage. Also, yes, you do have a bestiary in this game, which is pretty cool. You get a portrait for every enemy and a quick rundown of their stats. Although, I did notice that accessing the bestiary would often create audio issues. <laughs> In fact, I actually ran into a few technical issues while playing this game. From the aforementioned sound issue, to characters getting stuck in gates or doors, or enemies spawning right on top of me. Now, to be fair, when you enter a room, you do get a quick moment of invulnerability to avoid this, but it ends so quickly that I often don't even have time to react. There were also a few dark rooms where I suffered a few cheap hits. Like this part where I died instantly. I mean, how was I supposed to know that was there? Now granted, this happened in the same dungeon where you pick up the lantern. But it's not like I knew that. In fact, I have no way of knowing whether or not I even have to clear this room to get the lantern first. So of course I pressed on. But these are all pretty minor complaints and the developers themselves did state on their latest Kickstarter update that while the game is finished, they're still ironing out a few bugs, so these will more than likely be fixed before release. Graphically, Anguna, Scourge of the Goblin King, looks pretty good. I quite enjoyed the colors and the art style, especially on the outside. Though I have to say, these trees look really familiar, I swear I've seen them somewhere before. Or maybe it's because they remind me so much of the trees from The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Or maybe I'm just going crazy, who knows? I also liked some graphical effects like the way the light shimmers whenever there's a lit candle. But, on the other hand, I feel that rivers and the like could have used some animations to make everything seem less static. I was also not a fan of how drab and empty some of the dungeons looked. But that's not a deal breaker or anything. And the music was also pretty good, especially when you're in the forest. Overall, I quite enjoyed Anguna Scourge the Goblin King. It has a highly satisfying combat coupled with genuinely nice graphics and good music. With that said though, I do feel that the game was too short for its own good and at times too simple. Make no mistake, there's a lot of potential here, but I wanted more. More bosses, more items, more areas to explore, just more. But hey, for what it is, it's actually pretty good and worth adding to your NES collection. Now, if you want this game, but missed the Kickstarter like I have, the developers told me that they're planning on adding a pre-order page to their website. So my recommendation is to keep an eye out for this game and the day pre-orders go live. 
So yeah, Angune might be a little on the short side, but it's a really fun game and I for one am happy I got to play it. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stika's Retro Corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell and share this video, all that fun social media stuff. And you can also support me on Patreon, it may not seem like it, but even $1 is a really big help in keeping this channel going. I also want to thank a couple of my Patreon supporters like Anthony Ryan Bennett and Genru. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, bye!